When it comes to monitors, there are a few vital metrics that gamers care about. One of them is response time, how quickly the panel can change colors or brightness, but the other is input lag. Now manufacturers pretty often quote a figure for response type. Admittedly, those figures are often pretty misleading or just outright not accurate, but they don't pretty much ever quote a figure for input lag. So as a reviewer, it's really important that I test that and report my findings to you, the prospective buyer, so you know what you're getting if you buy the, the monitor I'd be reviewing. But let's take a quick step back and ask what is input lag? Well, in a perfect world, the instant that you click your left mouse button to fire a shot at an enemy in game, it would instantly display that shot on your screen. Okay, maybe accounting for the speed of electricity, which is roughly 90% the speed of light, and making a rough estimate of, say, 5 meters of total wiring between your mouse and your display, uh, it's about uh, 0.18 nanoseconds pretty fast then. Unfortunately, since your mouse runs on USB, best case right now is you have one of these 8000 Hz mice from Razer or Corsair, and it takes just 125 microseconds for the USB controller to receive your input. But then your PC needs to process that input, then the graphics card needs to draw a new frame, which even in a game like CSGO running with an RTX 3080 at 380 FPS, still takes 2.6 milliseconds. Then, assuming you're not using a 360Hz monitor, the GPU likely has to wait until the monitor is ready to refresh, which at 144Hz takes 6.9 milliseconds. By that time, the graphics card will have drawn at least two more frames that are ever so slightly newer. Then, and only then, can the monitor process that image, converting the digital frame into voltages for each one of the pixels and sub-pixels, then apply those voltages to make what is being displayed on the screen change. It's a lot, I know. Now, what I described there is total system latency, or total system input lag, end to end, lots of different names for it, but you get the gist, from mouse click to seeing it on screen. Now there is one other way to, to measure a monitor's input lag, and that's to cut out the PC entirely and measure the monitor on its own. While this is less of a, a real world measurement, it provides an easy and direct comparison between monitors and takes any performance issues with the system out of the equation. Personally, I like to quote both figures in my reviews so that you can get the, the best understanding possible before making a purchasing decision. The way you measure direct monitor input lag is with a device like this. This is a time sleuth. It has uh, a little sensor on the bottom and it outputs a video signal over HDMI. Admittedly, the maximum resolution and refresh rate this can do is 1080p 60, so not perfect, but it's still decent enough. You hold it on the screen and it will give you a rolling average measurement of the input lag, so really nice and simple. When it comes to total system input lag, well, there are a few different ways that you can measure that. Potentially the most obvious way is by pointing a camera at the screen, clicking your mouse and capturing what happens. Now, it's no use recording at 30 or 60 FPS. That won't give you very good results because each recorded frame will be either 33 milliseconds or 16.7 milliseconds apart. So for measuring something that can be just a couple of milliseconds, it's not very helpful. Recording at 240 FPS is better as each frame is captured every 4.2 milliseconds, but that's still not a great resolution to be measuring with. So the normal go-to is 1000 FPS, which means a frame is captured every one milliseconds. It's what I use with my Sony RX100 Mark V A, technically 960 FPS, but I factor that into my measurements. But it's no good just spamming your mouse button and recording it because you won't actually know when the mouse actually registers that click and sends it to the PC. Hence why I soldered an LED into the side of this mouse directly connected to the switch so that I can tell on camera when the signal is being well, started. That way works fine and does give reasonably accurate results. The trouble is that it's incredibly time consuming to record enough button presses to make an accurate measurement, then the time to sit in Premiere, cut the clips and work out how long each one was, average it all out. 
and then there's the couple millisecond variance between when the, the, the cutter in Premiere decides that's when the clip starts and when it's registered on the screen. It's not deal breaking and I'm relatively consistent in my decision making there, but you can definitely do it a better way. As Aperture Grill showed in his video on input lag, one you should definitely go and watch by the way, I'll leave it in the cards above for you, is you can use an LDR or light dependent resistor. My A-level electronics is really paying off. Uh, basically, an LDR is a little light sensor uh, that can detect changes in brightness. If you connect that to an Arduino, uh, you can then have something flash on the screen and have it record uh, how long it takes for that flash to, to appear. Um, in his case, he made a Unreal Engine 4 project that changes the entire uh, display color from black to white with a key press, and then has an Arduino uh, effectively do that a load of times, recording the results from the LDR and the screen. And that's great, but very much homemade, and while it's definitely more accurate for testing the monitor, it's not the, sa the same real-world measurement that testing in a production game would give. It's not what you, the end user, ex uh, would actually experience, and so I would like to do something slightly more, well, like I said, real-world. So, where am I going with all of this? Well, NVIDIA have a tool they use internally to test exactly this. It's called LDAT, short for Latency and Display Analysis Tool, and has a little LDR on the bottom, uh, some elastic to literally strap it to your monitor, and a little button that you use to start the test. This is LDAT V2. So unlike the model you may have seen Linus showcase last year, this one no longer requires you to have a mouse connected, although if you want to, you still can with a little two pin plug that's on the top. Now using their software, you can effectively have it automate as many shots as you like, have it log the results, uh, also instantly display a graph of the concentration of results, and even see things like the average minimum and maximum times. There are a few funky ways to use this, including having it trigger via sound, but for now I'll stick with using it the standard way with the sensor on the bottom. Now I've got this AOC 24 gtu the original one no less, and I've got the LDAP positioned sort of in the center, it's just above where the muzzle is in CSGO. I've also got their software set to auto fire 20 shots with a delay of 0.3 three seconds between them. So let's have a go. I'm gonna alt tab into CSGO and make sure that I'm in the right position for consistent testing. And then all I need to do is press the button on the LDAT. And off it goes. It will do 20 shots. In this case, that is exactly how many bullets the, uh, the gun has which is quite handy. Uh, that's it finished, so we can alt tab back in and we can see in their software that it's given us a chart or graph of the results. It's saying that the average time was 26.9 milliseconds, which is about right for the previous testing that I've done. And it has also logged all of the results for us too. So you can see that the, the sort of mean is the green line, but you can see the this deviation of shots and the, the average latencies you can expect based on literally just 20 shots in a row. Now you don't have to rely on muzzle flashes. In games with NVIDIA's reflex low latency mode built in, they have a, a effectively an added tool, which is a latency flash option that flashes a little white box on the left hand side of the screen when it receives a left click. So you can put the LDAT on that side and have it register that instead. Games like Fortnite and I think Overwatch have that, so if those are the sort of games you'd be interested in testing with this, assuming you could have one, uh, that is a, an option for you as well. So thanks for coming on this, this journey of explaining input lag, testing it, and also NVIDIA's sweet new tool that I will be using in future reviews. I hope the video has been interesting for you and maybe you learned something. If you want to see more videos like this, or let's face it, monitor reviews, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, there are plenty of ways you can do so in the description down below. There's links to Patreon, for access to my name in Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and of course you support me directly. There's also merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one that I designed myself. This one was in Blender, it's a sort of RTX 2060. 
Uh, and then there's also a load of affiliate links for places like Oracle Hawks UK, there's Amazon stuff down there, there's even VPN options and Humble Bundle and Streamlabs OBS, a load of stuff, feel free to check it out. There will be more videos on the end cards, maybe the monitor reviews playlist is that's probably makes the most sense. And that's pretty much it for me. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.